Welcome back to PG Chain Design. Today we are going to talk about this plate specific underneath the stone and how this is going to make your stone look much brighter for jewelry cat design with the Rhino 6 tutorial. Are you ready? Let's get started. We're going to starting with the stone size for 5 mm brown stone and if you don't know how to make this stone I have a video here I put the link on the right top corner to show you but if you would like to uh, just download it you can download this file for the practice the link is at the description below okay let's go to the top view and we want to use a circle and the circle is about this size holding the shift something a little bit inside of the stone then i want this circle to make a copy and roughly a little bit bigger something like that and we can kind of a temporary hiding the stone so we can see what is behind it what i like to do is make some triangle that so that will have a good reflection so first we need to know where the triangle is going to be i'm going to use the command it's called divide you can divide as many as you want it uh, but i would like to divide it into the 18 section so you can see the dot here is represent the section here i also like to divide this one as well and then i want to divide it into 18 section as well okay so with all the section that i have with the dot over here let me enlarge this one and now i want to select all the point that i have here and we kind of wanted to rotate it somewhere in between so let me rotate it if it's 300 divided by 18 is 20 i want to rotate it halfway so i'm going to type it 10 degree here so there will be something like this so that's helping me to making the line i'm going to make sure my all snap is on and the point it is on and i'm going to draw a line from here to here to here to here to making this uh, triangle then next let's explode it so it become a single line there next things I wanted to do is draw another line right in the middle um, like this and this one again draw a line right in the middle it's hard to know where is actually the middle so you can split this curve by those point and this point and then that will become just one section so we want to draw a line snapping into here and snapping into the midpoint so that will be exactly there we need to have this line a little bit taller so i'm gonna coming over um my perspective let's go ahead and pick up this curve and this curve and turn on the control point and we want to pick up this point and the this point holding the shift and you can move it up for whatever how high you want it so i'm just gonna move it up 0.4 millimeter and i'll get something like that if it is too tall we can adjust it later and then we simply just want to connecting the dot from here to here here to here and also from here to here here to here we also want to make a straight line here um, you can use the H for the round one if you want to, but since I like it uh, to be really facet looking, so I'm going to just draw a straight line. And let's go ahead to explore this one. And rest of it is making a bunch of the surface with the command surface from two, three, four edges. The same way you're going to pick up the surface edge here, the curve, and the curve, and then you go, you get this one. all right so now we have this one all we need to do is join them together so that will be one section there and after that what we like to do is to make them complete the section so we are going to use the polar array and snapping into the zero i would like to have 18 section of them for 360 degree and that's how we get the shape here if we like it just go ahead to select everybody and join them so the second things i need to making a thickness this is has no thickness especially where it's contact to the point so we are going to use the command duplicate boulder and that's going to give us the boulder over there so let's go ahead to pick up this curve here 
and also the curve with the shift on and then we click up both of the curve and we want to go into extruded curve straight and you can straight uh, extrude it whatever how tall you want by typing or just moving your mouse down and we'll have something like that and don't forget to don't forget to join them together so now we have the whole piece there and all we need to do is make them solid by using the command cap double check on our property it shows closed solid polish surface Let's turn it back to our stone here and take a look if you like it and if everything looks nice to you we are going to go ahead to make a prong set here. I'm going to draw a straight line usually we wanted to have this line a little bit taller um, than our table and I'm going to have it slightly taper it down and make sure you cover the cool like at the bottom. If you'd like to know more about the stone setting, you're welcome to check out my course on my website for all different kinds of stone setting. And in this case, we want to piping this guy to be something about this. We like to cutting into the stone, it's about 20% of the thickness on my prong. And so we are kind of moving in for a better position. Now we have it, we are going to uh, using the polar array, snapping into the zero. And I would like to have four of them and uh, 360 degrees so we can get this one over here. Now on the bottom to connect them, uh, you can use two rail or you can use a one solid one. I simply want to create two rail. So I'm going to snapping into the zero and making something about this size and moving this one down just a little bit. So this is going to be the circle, the rail. I like to use the conic corner. So I'm going to draw a square and roughly like this coming over here moving up my square and I can tilt it if I want to. We're going to use a sweep one rail. This is the rail. This is the cross section that will create the bar underneath the facet part for it to sit on. You can simply copy the cross section, move it down to the bottom. And then we are going to use a sweep one rail one more time. And this is the rail. This is the cross section. And then we'll have another one over here. After that, I would like to rotate it everything for 45 degrees there. So the prong will be in this position. Then you can put the bell and the jump ring and that will be our pendant today. I hope you enjoy the video. I have a lot more tricks and tips on my membership program. If you're interested, please check out my membership program. Thank you for watching. See you next.